Welcome back to the second lesson of this free beginner saber series from the Flow Warrior Academy. In today's lesson, I'll be covering the most fundamental move in all of lightsaber spinning, the basic spin. Remember from lesson one that almost all saber techniques are composed of two circles, one whose center originates in your wrist and one whose center originates in your shoulder. The basic spin is essentially the technique of the wrist circle. Now this circle can be applied to many different locations around your body, but today we'll be focusing specifically on the versions that are to the outside of your arm or the inside of your arm, which can be either your front and back wall plane or your left and right wheel plane. Now before I break this move down in detail, there's just a few things that I want us to keep in mind. The first being how we're holding the saber. As I mentioned in the first lesson, we want to grip it near the top of the hilt as close to the center of balance as possible. The reason for this is that the weight of the blade will be counterbalanced by the weight of the hilt, which will make all of your spins smoother and easier on your joints. The next thing we want to consider are the biomechanics of our body. If we were to hold the saber tightly throughout this motion, it would be very hard on our wrists. So what we actually want to do is hold the saber mostly between our thumb and index finger, with the other three fingers at certain parts of the motion loosening up so that only the pads of the fingers are on the saber. And I'll identify where these parts of the motion are in a moment. The other thing to consider is that our arm has the ability to either externally rotate or internally rotate. And this determines whether the saber is spinning to the outside of our arm or the inside of our arm. For the basic spin, the thumb and pinky sides will always be on opposite sides of your arms. So if the saber is spinning to the outside of my arm, the hilt will be tracing a smaller circle to the inside of my arm. Now keeping those points in mind, let's break it down. I'm going to start with the saber in my right hand and forward grip. I'm going to turn to face my right side and extend the saber in line with my arm and my shoulder. I'm going to slightly externally rotate my arm so the hilt of the saber is on the inside of my wrist. And I'm going to break down the circle that it traces into four quadrants. So first I'm going to let the tip drop straight down, and I'm going to loosen my fingers. Then I'm going to bring the tip of the saber up along the outside of my arm to be beside my shoulder. My fingers are still loose. Then I'm going to squeeze my fingers in and bring it up to point straight up. And then I'm going to extend my wrist and be back in my starting position. So those four quadrants are bottom, back, top, and front. And for the bottom and back parts of the circle, my fingers are loose, whereas for the top and front parts of the circle, my hand is closed around the saber. Start by first practicing just those four positions, and then you can start to try and smooth out the motion without stopping at each point, while paying attention to keeping the plane of the saber vertical and to the side of your body, so in this case in my right wheel plane. Paying attention to the way that the blade swings like a pendulum along the bottom half of the circle, and how you can squeeze your fingers as it's going from back to top to add energy to the saber. In this case, all of the motion should be generating from my wrist. I'm not bending my elbow or moving my shoulder at all. Next, we want to practice this motion in reverse so we can go back to the exact same starting position and then start with the pointed up quadrant, loosen the grip of our fingers for the back and the bottom quadrants, and then squeeze our fingers in together for the upstroke. Again, start with just those four quadrants, making sure that your alignment is correct, and then you can start to smooth out the motion and try and redirect the momentum while keeping the plane nice and vertical in your right wheel plane and keeping your arms straight so that there's no movement in your elbow or your shoulder. I'd also like you to practice this movement while opening your body up towards the camera, where what was your right wheel plane becomes your back wall plane. This is also the best position to learn how to do the basic spin to the inside of our arm or with our body facing towards the camera, what would be our front wall plane. Now let's learn how to do the basic spin on the inside of our arm. I'm going to start with the saber again in my right hand while facing the camera, extend my arm out to my right side, and internally rotate my wrist so the hilt of the saber ends up on the back side of my arm. Then I'm going to go through the exact same four quadrants where the tip of the saber points down, to the left where it ends up in front of my shoulder, up, and then this final quadrant is the most important where as I extend my wrist, I need to make sure that the hilt of the saber ends up on the back side of my arm again so that my arm is internally rotated. The most common mistake is as you extend your wrist to end up with the hilt on the front side of your arm, in which case you could not continue rotation in your front wall plane. Just like before, I'd like you to focus on those four steps initially, and then you can start to try to smooth it out very slowly while paying attention to keeping the plane of the saber vertical, in this case in your front wall plane. The reverse direction is very similar. If we go back to the exact same starting position with our arm internally rotates, the hilt is behind our arm. In this case, we go top first, then left in front of our shoulder, then down, and in this case there's less likelihood of the hilt getting caught on the wrong side of our arm because it very naturally ends up on the back side of our arm. Again, practice the four quadrants, focusing on just the wrist rotation without bending your elbow or moving your shoulder at all, and then you can start to smooth it out and try and focus on the redirection of the momentum 
while paying attention to the big circle in your front wall plane that the blade is tracing and the small circle in your back wall plane that the hilt is tracing. Next, we want to learn how to do this in reverse grip. So if I start with the saber in reverse grip in my right hand, I'm going to turn to face my right side and extend my arm out so that the tip of the blade ends up just to the outside of my right shoulder. In this case, I'm going to do the forward direction first where it goes up to the top. My thumb should be pointed down. The second quadrant is the most awkward where I kind of extend my pinky end out. Then I'm going to bring it down to the bottom and I'm squeezing along the bottom in order to add energy and come back up to the top. So top, forward, bottom, back and that squeeze is happening along the bottom swing, which you're redirecting over the top. Again, we want to learn how to do this in reverse direction. In this case, I'll get you to do the full bottom half in one swing because it's very awkward to just split it up into two quadrants. So we swing out to extend, then we internally rotate our wrist so that our thumb ends up pointing down and the pinky side is pointing up, and then bring it back behind our shoulder. Swing out, top, back. Swing out, top, back, and then we start to smooth it out trying to redirect that momentum, and again, keeping the plane of the saber vertical in our right wheel plane. Once again, we want to learn how to do this on the inside of our arm. So if I start facing the camera with the saber in reverse grip in my right hand extended out to my right side, the blade is going to be tracing a circle in my front wall plane. I'm going to start by pushing down my thumb to initiate the first half of the circle along the top half, and then I'm going to let the blade fall along the bottom half as I squeeze in my fingers. So push the thumb down for the top half of the circle, and then pull in the fingers for the bottom half. Then you can start to smooth it out. Again, really just focusing on the wrist rotation. This probably has the loosest grip out of all the variants of the basic spin. Once again, we want to learn how to do this in reverse direction. So if we go back to that exact same starting position, in this case, we're doing the bottom half of the circle first. And as we swing along the bottom half, we have to make sure that the hilt ends up to the outside of our arm. And then we're squeezing in our fingers for the top half of the circle. Start with just these two halves, making sure that the blade is staying as close as possible in your front wall plane, and then you can start to smooth it out, really focusing on the wrist dexterity without bending your elbow or your shoulder too much. Now we covered a lot today, so just a quick recap of all the variants that we covered. We learned how to do the basic spin in forward grip to the outside of our arm in both forward and reverse directions, as well as to the inside of our arm. And we learned how to do all of this in reverse grip in both the outside and the inside of our arm. I'd also like you to learn how to do all of these techniques in your left hand. This becomes especially important when we start to throw the saber where it switches hands, or we start to dual wield where we have a saber in both of our hands. It'll feel a little bit awkward at first, but trust me, it'll be good for your brain, it'll be good for your body, and you'll thank me later. That about does it for the basic spin for today. In our next lesson, we'll learn the figure eight, which shows us how to transition smoothly between the outside and inside of our arm in forward direction, reverse direction, reverse grip, and with our left hand.